himself. Oh, he's really dressed up for this one, isn't he? Comes in first as the challenger. And the, the news here is it's made at a 12 stone. And he has come in at uh, 11 stone 11, Leonard, which is a bit of a shock. I can't really believe that because he came in on the, on the scales uh, with a track to it. And I, I swear that his watch must have weighed about a pound. I would think he's more like 11 6, the true weight. And Donny Lalonde was 11 stone 13. And remember that he's the 12 stone 7 champion of the world, the WBC light heavyweight. But this is also for the vacant super middleweight championship of 12 stone. So Jenks Morton there, who's uh, worked with Leonard from almost the start of his career. Uh, as you know, you may have read that uh, Angelo Dundee, his normal corner man, is not with him on this occasion. Dispute over the pay. And there's a great tingle of anticipation around this arena and Ray Leonard is the betting favourite, legal betting of course here in Nevada. He started off on the boards here at 4-1 to one favourite, now he's dropped down to 3-1, to one. so a little bit of money from coming in for the, the big blonde. And he's chosen himself a new garb. He's only had two fights in six and a half years, this man, but uh, what a folk hero he is out here, just the same. I, I sometimes think he's sort of boxing's answer to Shirley Temple. And there he is, Donnie Lalonde, you may say Donny Who, the Canadian from Winnipeg, who uh, won the championship in the Port of Spain, which then vacant, I mean the light heavyweight championship. And he's come down in weight, which is so rare uh, in this modern day and age, not since the great Henry Armstrong, who died uh, recently, who held three titles at the same time, no longer permissible. So getting himself warmed up. But he, he defeats all the logic, doesn't he, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, about they never come back. I've certainly been impressed with this man's, well, not so much boxing ability, because I've seen very little of him, and what we've seen in the gymnasium, he hasn't given much away. He waves the left hand about uh, more than he really punches with it. But he's a very articulate and shrewd fellow, Don Lalonde. Lalonde's needled uh, Leonard just a little bit. They, They've been very good to each other backstage, and there's, there, there's a shot of uh, Janks Morton, as I said, he's, he's worked very well over the years, and Dave Jacobs, and the twist there is that he once worked with Hearns against Leonard, but uh, all is forgiven, obviously, and he's brought back. And the, they've got a lot of experience in that corner, and uh, when asked whether Leonard would miss Angelo Dundee, he said, no, I won't. So, as I say, he's a little bit needled because Donnie Lalonde said, I'm only fighting a welterweight. Former sports editor of uh, New York Life magazine, uh, Dave Wolf, is a lot of people think you should get an award for getting up to $5 million for a boxer who's not that well known, certainly in America. He's a good season trainer, as you can see, and Ralph Citro, one of the best uh, cut men around, is also a great statistician and brings out record books. Chuck Hull, the master of ceremonies, waiting now for the American closed circuit and pay-per-view viewing to start. Here's the tail of the tape, and there's a difference, obviously, in the in the heights, as you would expect, and age, not that much, really, and uh, the reach that Lalonde will have there. That's from fingertip to fingertip, that measurement, the wingspan. But we're all surprised that there's only two pounds in it, and Donny Lalonde made a good crack. He said, I'm fighting a fat welterweight. Well, the next bout of the evening is Dr. Elias Bannum of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The officials assigned for the next bout of the night, the judges are Chuck Chiampa of Las Vegas, Nevada, Stuart Kirschbaum of Detroit, Michigan, and Franz Marty of Austrichen, Switzerland. The timekeeper is Mike Lachella. Counting at the knockdowns, Al Bysak. The attending physician ringside, Drs. Flip Omansky, Donald Romeo, and James Game. And your referee, is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Middleweight and Light Heavyweight Championships of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of Potomac, Maryland, weighing in at 165 pounds, four wins, one defeat with 24 KOs, he is the holder of three different world titles in three weight divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Sugar 
Rick Linner. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, weighing in at 167 pounds. His professional record consists of 31 wins, two defeats, with 26 KOs. He is the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Danny, the golden boy, Lavon. So there it is now. Can he do the five-timer Sugar Ray Leonard? Just an incredible scene. The two main men of the fight game are here, Mike Tyson and uh, the great Muhammad Ali, who got such a, a big hand as he always does now. This is our first look at uh, Donald Alon in the, this part of the world. He won the championship in Port of Spain. And he defended it against Leslie Stewart, who once boxed in an amateur club in London. But is he good enough to take on uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, who doesn't really allow any ring rust to set in he defies all the logic and he has proved as he did against Marvin Hagler in that tremendous uh, fight that you saw on ITV that he can stay out and come back so now let's see what the tactics are going to be it's the right hand that you've got to wait for for Lalonde is he uses the left hand really just waving about a bit he's got a pin in the left shoulder uh, damage when he was a nice hockey player in, the, in his younger days, obviously. He's 28 against Leonard's 32. Well, the first thing, Jimmy, he really does look that much bigger, doesn't he? You can hardly believe there's only two pounds in this. Yeah, he's uh, so much taller. And Lalonde, what he must do, obviously, is to try to put Leonard under pressure. He can't afford to allow Leonard to dictate the, the way things should be going. He's going to have to move forward and try to, to back him up and, and corner him. Use all the advantages he has, but uh, easier said than done. OK, so we'll wait for this scout and report to finish in the, in the start and then uh, get them settle down and see what the tactics might be. Oh, yes, well, he's saying that didn't hurt, Ray. What are you going to do next? Obviously, uh, Leonard's filled out since he was a, well, almost a spidery welterweight. And uh, Fox is a lightweight in the Olympic Games in Montreal. It's all a question of now getting the timing back to him. You can never really get that in the gymnasium, eh? No, well, uh... Obviously, Lena's well prepared. We, we know what he's like. We were shocked when he came back to defeat Hagler. He had belief in himself. He obviously must have the same, and he wouldn't be here tonight. He certainly doesn't need the money. No, multi millionaire. Loves the pride of the fight game, loves to achieve things in, in all walks of life, and uh, this is his stage. a bad idea for Lalonde to think a little bit about defence too because although he's so much bigger than Leonard, Leonard's punches are so precise, so perfectly timed, he could hurt anybody. Okay, As I said, he waves that left hand around like a, a policeman on traffic duty, Lalonde. Uh, there's no class about that. And uh, that, as you say, that's why Leonard's picked this, Ellie, because he figures I can beat this fellow. He waited until Hagler was at the right to the decline of his career before he picked him he's a bit of a shrewd nut well there it is he, he likes to gesture to the crowd he wants to be an actor he's a good talker now the old firm of Jack Morton and uh, Leonard how many times has he, he been through this 259 rounds 260 now with that one in his career about captures the atmosphere, doesn't it? There's some the usual wisecracks around here, Jim. They say he's he's got a, 
He's a suicide blonde who died by his own hands. Right away. Right out. Won't let him come out for play too early. Round two. This super middleweight is 12 stone. It's a vacant championship just introduced by the World Boxing Council. The other ruling bodies now have also established this as the weight between middleweight and light heavyweight. But of course, because he is the light heavyweight champion, that is at stake as well. Although history has not always proved that because Henry Armstrong and Lou Ambers, who Although he lost, he didn't lose the higher weight title. So many people try to guess what Leonard's game plan would be. And uh, he really does kid when he's being interviewed and uh, he never really gives the game away. attraction apart from the manager which could be around 12 million dollars if they get all the ancillary rights tough up there for Leonard I think the satisfaction for him would be to try and knock a bigger fellow over yeah well I'm pretty sure throughout his career in the gymnasium he's floored a few light heavyweights because as I say he's such a perfect punch and his timing's so good um, but, uh, I think Leonard's just one of these men who keep hitting a, a challenge in front of him Keep looking for a, an Everest to climb, and he certainly has found another challenge here. Well, he's using that left hand with a better effect than he did in the opening round, the Canadian. <laughs> and he's, he's willing to rough it up too. And Richard Steele, the local sports paper publishers, diving in there. Oh, around the, the kidney area, that gym, that was a bit uh, dangerous. Well, this is what Lalonde must do, he must get close to Leonard and bully him, push him around a little bit. Yeah. Whenever there's a couple of feet between them, you always expect Leonard to come forward with some of these uh, solid punches. doesn't do much for the left hand Jim does he I was wondering about that doesn't seem a lot of power in it for a big man he just tries to whack over the clubbing right while that Leonard's doing the, the smart punch picking well, the fact that he doesn't have uh, that good a job he's gonna to have to get up close and rough Leonard up yep as we get the countdown for the end of the second that seems as you say Jim he wants to do that he waves his arms there uh, along as though he's pleased to get through two rounds unless he's actually satisfied with what's going on, I suppose that's what it is. He's only really fought two genuine middleweights in his career, Marcus Geraldo and Hagler, Leonard, and uh, to move up to a genuine light heavyweight with Lalonde, despite the fact that uh, Lalonde has come down to 11 stone 13 and not 12 stone 7, he still represents a true light heavyweight. Don't let him rough him, roll him a little bit, spin him some time, don't let him just rough him back on the rope, okay? Don't help him slip him through punches, that rub of the Vaseline, oh, there's not the wash and oh, brush up game that they're giving him. It stops the chafing of the gloves a little bit, it won't take the, the power away. Jim, have a look at this replay. Well, Leonard a little bit sharper, the line been made to look a little bit clumsy once or twice. Round three, scheduled for 12. Should it go to hell? Judges from Las Vegas, Michigan, and Switzerland. And the referee doesn't score. And he really has packed them in here. 15,300 seater from $200. The cheap ones are sold out to $1,000 for the high rollers. And there's the roughing up stuff that uh, Jim Watt was saying it has to be done. Leonard's saying, I'm going to be a, like a mosquito, I'm going to keep annoying him. And it looks as though he meant that too, with the way he's doing it, biding his time a bit. 
So I think it must be said, there's a bit more strain on Lennon tonight, a bit more pressure than there was in the Hagler fight. Nobody expected him to, to defeat Hagler, but I think most people, he, he's a betting favourite, so a little bit more pressure tonight. And the one's beginning to get close to him here. footed as he showed against Tagler, Jim, has he? No, but uh, Alon hasn't put him under as much pressure uh, in the early stages as Hagler did. But, uh, no, he doesn't look quite uh, the, quite the guy he had. It's kind of a big fighting cowboy look about him, isn't he? He's almost like a Californian surfer rather than a cha boxing champion, uh, Donny Alon. He's, he's a handsome guy. And he's, he's a bit clumsy, but he gets away with it. Leonard, can get Leonard, out, says the referee. Leonard did that, has done a, a lot of smart things during his career. Maybe he thinks pulling Lalonde down to 12 stone is smart. Maybe he doesn't feel Lalonde uh, has the same strength at 12 stone. But uh, the big fella looks uh, fit and strong enough at this moment. He's lost a couple of fights, of course, uh, Lalonde, early on. Uh, but since uh, manager Wolf took him over, he's on a winning roll. the appearance of Leonard, that's what draws these people in, and I think they're a bit surprised that this crew Canadian has started well, and he's looking at him, Leonard, and saying, what do you think you're up to? I'm the real champ. And there's a good coverage on both men, and they an unusual uh, emblem that the London's got on his uh, trunks there, there's no excuse for child abuse, he's a great campaigner for that cause, and in fact Leonard has helped him in the past with that. So, as they both said, after the fight, we'll be friends again. <laughs> and they're already working there on a swelling uh, gym around the lungs left eye there, the, the, the uh, ice swell thing, rather like a doll's house uh, iron. And the, the red the wine-coloured jackets that they issued the Nevada State Commission inspectors to make sure nobody there's anything untoward in the corner, watching the seconds of both men. So round four then, scheduled for 12, two championships at stake. And the crowd acknowledged that, but the London didn't seem to be too bothered, he came straight back in again. Sort of punched it right in the bleachers at the back here of the tennis court can be seen. Lalonde well, is a little bit crude. I don't think once Leonard goes to work, he'll have much trouble landing punches on his chin. The question is, will he have the power to trouble him? And personally, I think he will. He's just stepping up that gear now, Leonard. He's putting on the show that the crowd expect from him. I'm not surprised by that because uh, all the boxing traders did say uh, don't expect anything polished but he, he does get results and he does bang with the right hand a bit but against what kind of opposition oh and the when I say a bit he banged hard with that right hand punch and that's the only the second time in his career that Ray Leonard has hit the deck he was down against Kevin Howard can he recover from this well, he might be a, a one-hand puncher, but what he does with that right hand at Lalonde is no fluke. Now, can this turn this fight right around now? 
and knock all the confidence out of Leonard. I want to just show that champion grit that he's shown so many times in the past and come back. Well, anybody thought this was a phony fight, Jim, are now wondering what's happening now when a man like that goes on the deck, that's for sure. Well, that right hand caught Leonard high, but it should come up and uh, Lalonde spotted it up on the ropes with another right hand, just missed his whisker with that one. Leonard's taken too many chances. Leonard's going to have to come forward and find some power to discourage Lalonde. He can't keep backing off because uh, these right hands are landing. They put it away with the left hand well there now. He's got to fight him with his own game there, Leonard, hasn't he? Time worn saying about a good bigger than will always be the good Litman. Now I'm wondering if that's going to be true in this case. That will, well, it's the, the shock of the year, if nothing else, to see the great Ray on the deck. Well, I tell you, it's uh, he's such a popular little fellow, Jim. It's like watching Bambi being mugged, isn't it? Seeing him go over like that. And he's probably sound to the corner what happened there and he's been cut oh well the the battle of the pretty boys as they one of two people have tagged it now then here it is coming in the replay jim it was a good right hand caught him high on the top of the head but uh, no question put him over and certainly should come up it comes again bank high on the head just as well it was high on the head that was a good right hand punch yeah, it surprised me that it was that high. It's amazing. It was on the just the side on the temple there, and that, uh, that Daisy is a boxer anyway, that's for sure. He wouldn't have gone down for any other reason. And that in itself is quite a remarkable shot to see Ray Leonard showing blood. Well, I tell you, the, the tingle of anticipation you can imagine now after watching that in the fifth round, Can the Canadian keep up his strength and uh, the raw strength that he's got? Just might pay off for a man who has only had two fights in six and a half years. So three to one on favourite Leonard now. I should imagine there's one or two odds players are just uh, shaking a little bit. Especially if they paid a thousand dollars to watch this. Leonard doesn't show the same sharpness as showed against Hagler. But he's going to have to start going forward and trying to use a bit of power against the one back and off doesn't seem to be working. Well, maybe he was carrying too much weight to, today, Jim. I don't know. I, I thought he was rather a bit of a phony weight, uh, putting a heavy watch on and tracksuit and all that kind of thing, but maybe he has slowed him down a bit too much. Yeah, there's the old double combinations going there, the two punches at the time stuff from the Leonard we know. I'll tell you what though, Jim, from what we've seen of Levon uh, backstage, he, he can match Leonard for mental sharpness, and there again, what a dangerous banger. Picking him off there with the double punches coming in. The left hand double punch, the, the old postman's knock. And the crowd really behind Leonard now. Oh, what a battle this is now. He's going to try and stop the Canadian in his own game. Strength to strength. And he's wobbling there as the referee pulled them apart. Levin, Lalonde's knees buckled a bit. And the crowd and noise is incredible in the open air here in Las Vegas in the tennis court area. 
And this is Leonard back at his best now with a punch accuracy. Stepped up the gear, going into overdrive almost. Well, I'll tell you, it's time for us to get our breath back with that, Jim. That was some turnaround by Leonard there. Yeah, well, the, there was a need for power, and, and Leonard supplied that power. The long knows now that uh, Leonard has uh, the power to trouble him because he wobbled him with the right hand. His legs uh, certainly seem shaky. There it goes. Good right hand punch. Leonard showed there he has the power to mix it with Lalonde. So I think Lalonde's going to have to think a bit more about defence than he has been doing. And yeah, from a different angle, it's just as well the, those two were missed, but this one didn't. That's the one that uh, created the danger. And then when the referee dived in, he just definitely just couldn't keep the legs together for a split second. But he then pulled himself together and swapped punches well after this, Lalonde. Right hand, they're saying over there in the Lons corner as he gets off the stool to remind him. And he knows that really is the most effective punch that he has. Leonard cut, they've staunched that fairly well between rounds there in round six. Scheduled for 12. Big raw bone fighter, Jim. Uh, Donny LeBlond, I suppose they should call him, but he looks as though he, he holds a punch pretty well. Yeah, he holds a punch well, but uh, if he keeps taking them regularly, he won't be holding him. He's no defence at all. He's very crude. His hands are far too low. And uh, if Leonard gets into his stride with accurate punching, then Lalonde will end up going over. He's banking too much on his own right hand. Holds that head too high as if he's straining to look over a garden fence at somebody, Jim, up there. He's, he doesn't duck it at all. to the body there, a little bit use of the shoulder too by Daniel Lundy. He's, he's a good game fighter. He, he may lack the, the class and certainly couldn't even be in the, the same uh, town as uh, Leonard, let alone same ring uh, in class terms. But he looks like a, a brave enough battler, but as Jim Watt said, it's a question of the, the accumulation of punches, whether that'll catch up with him on now or whether he can really unload that explosive right hand as he did there. I tell you what, Leonard has, got, has really got to do, do the hit and hot run stuff here for a while. He's got to try and hide a bit. In there, stood his ground and let the right hand go, but he didn't quite connect. Well, he may not be the best of champions, Jim, but he's going to make it uh, awkward for those who think they are Lalonde, isn't he? Yeah, well, this is a far more exciting fight than I expected. I thought it might be a bit boring at times with Leonard doing so much boxing, but it's not. this has really been a hard fight all the way through. Sort of contest where you can't afford to blink or look down at your programme here, I promise you that. Leonard won't win anything at the psychological battle with the London. I'm convinced of that. He, he really is a sharp character, very articulate. Jim, in replay. Well, Leonard's shaking again with that big right hand of Lalonde. He's been caught far more often than I ever thought he would have. Just before this point, got a little bit untidy here, but that's really because Leonard was shaking. Turned out a bit of a Houdini too, didn't he, uh, Leonard there? He had to slip and slide to get his way out of trouble there. Very craftily, that's where the experience does come in. And once more, Jim, this is the point where Leonard then decided to come back and mix it with him and then was 
didn't mind that Lalonde had the clutch to get out of trouble at the finish. And there's the, the star-studded audiences, Tyson and Ali in the audience, apart from the usual array of film stars and comedians. He's really fighting with a, with a bit of temper at the start of round seven now, Lalonde, isn't he, Jim? Yeah, and, and I think we'll have to remember, against Hagler, Leonard was very tired for the last three rounds. So, so maybe so much inactivity, maybe a fight at this pace. I wonder how he'll feel in the last three rounds of this one if it goes that long. So much pride at stake by both fighters here. We talk about Leonard's pride. Obviously, Lalonde's got more than his share of it, and you, you get the feeling that they're saying, well, we want this one to have the finality of a gunfight, really. We want no arguments at the end of this. No further trouble with the, the injury just to the top of Leonard's nose there. Quite an easy cut, as they say in the fight team, turns to cope with in the corner. Oh, there's a good right handy. Leonard, when he gets the range, can more than match uh, Lalonde with the right hand punch. But it's whether it's going to be hard enough. And the crowd literally on their feet at the back of this arena now. They can see Leonard's going to try and unload now a salvo of punches. <laughs> Look at this, keeping him off, dropping his hands, Leonard. Well, they're not exactly baffling each other with science, Jim, but this is fight entertainment, isn't it? Yeah, this is a cracker. As I said, far more exciting than I thought it would be. It's not the kind of fight I expected to see tonight. Well, I tell you, it's pretty off easy for a multi-millionaire to work, work up enough for excitement as Leonard does. You'd think he'd be saying, what am I doing in here? But he, he thinks he can total at least 12 million for this. And that's as good a reason as I can think of. But you need, you need some motivation when the, when the punches start sinking in. You've got to always take your share in this game. Jim, he's just open-mouthed a bit now, the Canadian, isn't he? He's showing a bit of wear and tear. Yeah, well, this may be where Leonard's experience at top level. Maybe stand him in good stead. What a good finish to this round now. As though he's got a built-in clock with him there, Leonard. And he's following him back to the corner and probably saying, now it's my turn to start. He really doesn't need to do that, Leonard. Uh, he's accepted as a great champion, and he should uh, not be bothering with all those little bits of aggravation that go on. So now hey, Tommy baby. Gallagher hey. and uh, Ralph Citro have got to try and pull this man together as the manager stays on the outside of the ring. You could be firing back, I got it. You could be firing back, listen to me. I want him to fire you back there and on the I agree with that. Bip, bip. Don't look to lunge. Don't look to loop your punches. Calm down. Very nice. Calm down. Very ready, nice. Well, baby, if he can ready. fight like he's trained there, the Londo will be right okay. Hand. you got to throw two, three punches. Two, three punches. Two, he's three ready, punches. Guys. Jim? Yeah, well, Leonard got himself into the driving seat there. And now I think uh, Lalonde's loose defence could maybe be put him in trouble. Eighth round. Now as we're really getting to the well the history making stages here whether Leonard can come up with his fifth championship or whether there's still uh, enough fight and life left in the big Daniel Lalonde to keep the hero out of the ring for good. He fires all the, the old time worn axioms of boxing that they never come back as Leonard. And uh, nobody even bothers to ask him now about the retina problems that he has they don't even become an issue anymore since he defeated Marvin Hagler <laughs> 
far more accurate punches and solid now from Leonard. Class must tell Jim. Yeah, the difference in class now. Roland looked very weary at the end of the previous round. So we'll have to see what, what his powers of recovery are like, but uh, he's not putting Leonard under the same pressure. And his own right hand doesn't have the same snap. He's going to have to land a big right hand, I think, to get his confidence back up where it should be. Oh, and he did there too. He staggered down a little bit with that. He got a bit close in and got caught with the right hand punch, but he's, he knows how to counter back, as, as Jim was saying, that this is where the experience counts. When you've been in with Hearns and Hagler and Duran twice. He's not only a classic type of fighter, Leonard, Jim, he's got all the guts and courage that good champions must have. Yeah, he also has a very sound chin. I think they're both in need of a little blow there, Jim. They sort of looked at each other there as if they thought, well, should we have a breather? I was surprised to see Leonard back off like that and yeah. show out. I think that was one of Leonard's ploys, Reg. I think he was trying to roll along down to him there. Could well be, yes. That's the sort of thing he gets up to. He likes to think of boxing as a bit of a chess match for him too. He loves to outmaneuver people. Oh! He says, don't hold him, Donny. Well, while he was trying to hold Leonard, he really caught that left hook. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Yep, as I say, that's the most unusual sight, but it hasn't worsened at all there, and uh, the seconds are having no trouble. There. A little bit of adrenaline cream, once you think they're putting on there. Jim? Well, Alon needed to land a couple of big right hands, and he got through with them. Now Leonard's still looking at the business, uh, the better technique, the more experience, but at least Lalonde keeps himself alive uh, with a couple of good right hand punches. A little bit untidy at times there. Leonard again, I think that punch was just towards the end of the round. Yeah, that was at the finisher. And throw your punches. Just throw them. Is it that this wouldn't go uh, five or six rounds and we're coming out for the ninth and a bit too early? I blow the whistles to get the seconds out of the corner and both boxers get into the ring before time. Into the ninth then. Jim only can do it really in spasms. They can't maintain it now. They've punched themselves out a bit early on. Yeah, well, uh, any success Lalonde's had, it's been with single shots. He's, he's never really had any regular success. Whereas Leonard, once he, once he gets in, he's straight into his rhythm. Really is very accurate with his punches. Piling up those points a level with a repetitive left hand punch there. It's almost like a Chinese water torture when he keeps flicking that out like that. There it is again and again. He's definitely not getting out of the way enough though, Leonard. He's getting tagged here. As Jim Watt said, he's got a very sound chin and he's going to need it. What a gutsy character though, there's no doubt about it, and uh, there's some more blood flow in there, Jim, where's that one from? I think Lalonde's right eye looks at it, it's like, oh, Leonard's shaking him with these right hands. 
What a comeback by Ray Leonard. Absolutely incredible. See, he knows how to put them all together and he's done it in round nine. A minute to go. And he's banged the top of the ropes right above us here, Leonard. As if to say, you thought I was going, but I'm back again. He's giving him the mandatory eight count. He's made Leonard go back to the neutral corner, but he is all over. Bar the shouting now. It's a brave performance by Lalonde, but he has nothing left. And that's it. He won't get up from that one. The referee was about to dive in as he fell to the ground. The, there's no formality of the count. He's fought his hard out Lalonde. But this man, Ray Leonard, is just one of the all-time greats of boxing now, Jim. I mean, there was a moment there when we yeah. wondered how he would be, and he's pushing the seconds off. Get out of my way, he's saying. While this fellow's lying on the floor and the doctor's obviously attending to him. Well, in that last round, Reg, you showed what a great fighter he is because he took some of the long shots. The long found some more strength, hit him with some cracking right-hand punches. But Leonard took the punches, come firing back, and once he, once he got started, once he got him pinned on the ropes, never let him off, and there was a finish. I thought the referee actually could have stopped it before the final knockdown, because I don't think Lalonde had recovered. He was about to go in. He was just that fraction late getting to him there as he went down. And now the doctors do keep these fellows on the canvas. They will not let them get up right away, even though they may have recovered. Uh, and here it is now, you see, the doctor's saying, OK, you, we can see now the eyes are uh, all right and uh, you, you can be hauled up. And that's the doctor, Flip Hermansky, from uh, the Nevada State Commission, who really is a, what they call a fight doctor in this game and is experienced at that. But the first thing he wants to do now, Lalonde, is to go over to Leonard and say, hey, mate, how did you do that? As I say, they both campaigned... Uh, against Charles de Bush, and uh, Anon now has obviously admitted, well, I knew I was going in with a great fighter, but not really as great as that. Good sporting finish, and this fella milks the applause from the crowd. He absolutely loves it. What a star he is. And I'm wondering, Jim, now, will he say, well, I had to do that the hard way. Is it worth going on or not? There's only really Tommy Hearns left, and does he really want that now? I don't know if five it championships, five, he's saying. He's doing an alley here, and uh, Ali in the audience is acknowledging that as well. Here's the finish, Jim. Yeah, well, once uh, Leonard had knocked the resistance out, that, that right hand, a couple of right hands with, it, with the punches that caused all the trouble, and he'd knocked the fight right over Lalonde here. Lalonde didn't have the experience here either to take a count or to grab hold of Leonard. He tried to get out of the way of the punches, but which was impossible. Leonard was on song there, see, he should have been grabbing hold of Leonard here. Leonard wouldn't allow him. Overcame the left hook, and that was the first knockdown. And then, uh, presumably, this is it when he got up again, yes. And the referee did allow it to go on, but the way he just rightened those punches in as though he was uh, back in his lightweight youth again there. And I would have thought he'd probably want to rest on his lowers. That's the first knockdown, Jim, yes, it is, with the left hook. Sugar Ray Leonard, Ray you had so many incredible fights, so many challenging fights. This may have been the toughest fight in your career. Well, I have to say, Roy, that uh, I have to give a great deal of credit to Jose Suleiman and this uh, committee because, see, they had uh, will pick up out of this. said some incredible things about Don Lon, as well as uh, some boxing experts didn't particularly feel that he was worthy. They proved he was worthy, not just knockdown, but just his competitive nature. This fight also meant a great deal to me because I dedicated this fight to Randall Robinson and Trans Africa for his uh, undying commitment to the apartheid in South Africa. Ray, I want to ask you about the fourth round. Was it, was it more of a slip or was it a legitimate right hand? I got a little lack of days ago. He caught me. Because, see, Donnie, because his left hand is not at his best, he's uh, it compensates for the right hand. So he timed it perfectly because I got a little lazy with him. Late in the fight, it seemed as though, uh, if we can move over here and see the monitor, it seemed as though uh, you, you were gaining in confidence with him and he was a little awkward, basically. Well, he gives you a whole, the whole square. You know, it's not really that easy to hit because he, the way he faces you. But here is just an amazing hit of punches that I threw. I knew one would get him because I started to hurt him to the body. Took a good punch, didn't he, Ray? Oh, he really did. You know, that left hook there was what I worked on throughout the gym. Donnie Lalonde came into this fight, and a lot of people said that, uh, you know, who's Donnie Lalonde, even though he was a light heavyweight champion? I guess, uh, you know, you pay him a lot of respect after this fight. One thing about it, you know, Tommy Hearns was victimized by that, by Barkley, 
and almost by Kitchen. I knew this guy could fight. I've seen him. Forget about who he's for. The fact of the matter is, he's become, he became a champion, Roy. And hell, he fought like a champion. There was a guy that was sitting about two feet from me during the whole fight, and he is the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael Nunn. You want a piece of Michael Nunn right away? Well, I'm going home and I'm enjoying Thanksgiving, enjoy my family, enjoy Christmas. I'll think about those guys later on. I got time. Ray Leonard, congratulations. An incredible comeback and a, and a big victory tonight. Thank you, Mark. Back to ringside, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, a brave effort by Lalonde, but the crude Canadian's right, not enough. The finesse and amazing power of Leonard makes history. The first man to win five Two world minutes. titles. That sets seconds. up a predictable rematch with Thomas the Hitman Hearns and about Michael Nunn, who of course won here in Las Vegas last Friday. That could be in the spring. In fact, Bob Arum tells me that he had an option on the fight. Not everyone agrees with him. Well, I'm sure you'll want to see that again, and you can in most regions at 7.30 p.m. this evening. From all of us, good morning.